Hey guys, it's Annika and welcome to my first actual video where I will show you the lovely day that I had at America's longest running ski hill, Suicide 6. Let's get it going! When I first started doing some research for this project, I stumbled across Suicide 6. It boasts an impressive claim on ski history and I just knew it had to be the first place that I went to. I mean, it's the oldest tow service ski hill. Why not start at the beginning? A little history to start us off because I personally find it very interesting. Howison Hill in Steamboat Springs, Colorado is actually known as the oldest ski hill in North America. People have been sliding down those slopes on two sticks since the early 1900s. A ski jump was built in 1913, but a usable ski lift wasn't put into place until 1937. Suicide 6, on the other hand, has the claim on the oldest tow service in America since 1934. Plus, it was just closer to where I was living, so we're just gonna go with that. Back in the winter of 1933, Wallace Bunny Bertram was staying at the White Covered Inn in Woodstock, Vermont, which was owned by Robert and Elizabeth Royce. The three of them got to talking about creating a lift like Alex Foster had in Quebec a few years earlier. Using a 900 foot long rope and a Model T engine, the lift was opened on January 18th, 1934. A few years later, Bunny moved his operation from what was known as Hill Number no. 2 to Hill Number no. 6. And the rest is a vivid and colorful history. A few highlights of the history include the longest running alpine ski race called the Fisk Trophy Race, which was started in 1937, the first youth racing program in 1956, and the first national snowboarding championships in 1982, where snowboard pioneers like Paul Graves, Jake Burton of Burton Snowboards, and Tom Sims competed. So cool. If you're like me and you want to learn more about the history of this place, I've linked all of the things that I use down in the bottom. So after a bunch of research and a bunch of time freaking out about this whole thing, I picked a random weekday in January and we headed out. I picked up my friend Kin and we drove up to Woodstock, Vermont, which was formerly Abenaki land. On the way up, we got to talk about Kin's ski history. Kin is not only one of the most interesting, humble, badass women that I have forever looked up to, but she is also one of the kindest. Her father taught her how to ski when she was three years old, taking his old army skis and chopping them down to two feet and screwing on her boots so that she could ski in the backyard. He also took a lawnmower engine and created his own rope tow on that hill so that all the neighborhood kids could come over and ski together. Uh, dreams? Anyone? That's what I want to do one day. <laughs> She skied at Witch Ski Toe in Massachusetts and grew up as a racer. And then in sophomore year of college, she was a ski coach at Wildcat Mountain in New Hampshire. She and some friends would bring some chocolate chip cookies up to Mount Washington for a man named Willie Harris and then would ski on the way down. And she was part of a Warren Miller film back in the 60s. She was skiing Tuckerman's Ravine, which is a very big kind of backcountry ski slope for a lot of people in New England. And uh, they were doing some filming and she just happened to be there. And so she's in the background. I haven't been able to find it yet, but if anyone somehow has access to any of the Warren Miller films in the 60s, please let me know. I would love to see those. Currently, Kin is 77 and working with the disabled at a local ski hill. She told me that she never plans to stop skiing. And knowing her, I don't think she ever will. From ripping up the headwall at Tuckerman's Ravine to helping unknown children take off their ski boots, Kin just does it all. I aspire to be half as cool as she is in my lifetime. And I was honored to have her join me on the beginnings of my adventure. In 1,000 feet, your destination will be on the left. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> The lodge was gorgeous. It was like what dreams are made of. It was retro cozy and there was a big fireplace and the wood was gorgeous and the posters were really amazing. And there was lots of old photos up from all of its history. Last season I had the Indie Pass, which is a little similar to something like the Epic Pass or the Icon Pass, where you get to go to a lot of different ski hills, but this is for all smaller independent 
getting my pass was super easy. I just showed them my empty pass and they gave me a free ticket. The hill was so quiet, but that could be expected for a Thursday in the middle of January. No <laughs> the whole mountain's to ourselves. Here's just chickens. Chickens! <laughs> Looks like a little sugar sack. Yeah, it does. It was so nice to be back on skis for the first time that season. I've been having a rough one, and the second I was flying down that slope, it was like I was waking back up. Like, yes, this is where I should be. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Unfortunately, a lot of the runs were closed due to low snow coverage. Everywhere out east just kind of had a really bad snow year. My favorite run was probably called Easy Mile. It was this beautiful tree line cruiser, and you got to see gorgeous views on the way down. I don't know, just a lot of really nice, mellow rollers. I'm kind of easy to please, I guess. Suicide 6 comes from the fact that it was hill number 6 and someone commented on the pitch saying that it would be suicide to go straight down that hill. The face was actually very steep but it was super fun. All of the lifts were painted this blue green color and I was a huge fan. I also love that the tea bar had stuffies attached to each of the bars. Oh my god, they have little bears on them! That's so cute! Oh, I get the lobster! Thank you! <laughs> Everyone that we met and talked to was so nice. At one point, we were in the gift shop and Kin asked if she could go run and grab her wallet and she said, do you trust me? And the shop worker there said, of course I trust you. I live in Vermont. I leave my keys in the car and I leave my front door unlocked. I had such a wonderful time. It was really great to get back into skiing, to explore something new, and to talk to a few people. And of course, it was just made so much better with Kin. Thank you all for watching. I think I'm supposed to ask you all now to like and subscribe. If you just want to comment below, tell me your favorite ski memory from this last year before everything went to... before everything turned sideways. <laughs> that is one down and over 600 to go. Let's do it. I've got mail. Damn it, that was so close. <laughs> Why is that so hard? All the way up, we got to talk about skis. Skis. That's it. <laughs> um. Mm -mm -mm -mm.